rational equations and functions. So that means we're going to have things that are equal to each other. And usually when that is occurring, you can solve these equations. So first of all, if you look at these, you have a fraction here and here. And maybe you remember that a half is the same as two-fourths. And if you had an equation, you could find the cross products where I take the value here, multiply it over there, 1 times 4, and that's equal to this times that, 2 times 2. So those are called cross products. And when this was first something that was taught to people, like just as an equation goes, if you have A over B equal to C over D, you can do AD, multiplying them, and say that's the same as BC. But I think at this point, that's probably pretty locked in. So as I look at 12 over x plus 5, even though there's more complicated things going on, and 4 over x plus 2, all I see is that I'm going to multiply this by that. Now they help us by showing it in parentheses. And I'm going to set that equal to the denominator of that by that. So I'll write that as 4 times x plus 5. And of course, you have to have parentheses there. Now, you could start distributing now, just for the heck of it. I think I'll divide both sides by 4 to avoid having larger values. So this will end up being 3 times x plus 2 is equal to x plus 5. That way I'm avoiding distributing on the right. It's not like it really matters. If you were like, well, hey, I actually think that's more work, I'll say, fine, I agree with you. You know, do it your way. So here's 3x plus 6 after I distribute the left is equal to x plus 5. And the weird thing is that even though this was a rational function, I'm just solving a equation to the first degree. So I'm going to have 2x is negative 1. And I don't think I need to show division here. I'm just going to write x is negative 1 half and box it. Now, unfortunately, we're stuck with a fraction here. So checking this out isn't crazy easy. Um, but if I type in to my, my calculator 12 over 4.5, and I'm getting that by cutting a corner, I know that if I take half away from 5, that's what I'll get. That's going to be equal to 4 over 1.5. And you can, you know, do the cross products of this if you think that's easier. But just all I'm encouraging you to do is plug those values back in and make sure that the left side ends up being equal to the right as you check these. Moving on to problem two, we're going to do the cross products again. So let's rewrite 7 over y minus 3 is equal to 3 over y plus 1. Multiplying the cross products, we're going to have 7 times y plus 1 is equal to 3 times y minus 3. Distributing, I get 7y plus 7 is equal to 3y minus 9. And next, I look at this equation, I'm like, well, let's take 3y away from each side. If you wanted to subtract 7 in this step, that's fine. I'll rewrite the left side as 4y plus 7 is equal to negative 9. Subtract 7 from both sides, and you'll get 4y is equal to negative 16, which means that y is negative 4. Now this one we can check. Whoops, sorry about that. If I plug negative 4 in up here, I will get 7 over negative 4 minus 3. So 7 over negative 7 ends up just becoming negative 1. And then if I plug negative 4 over here on the left, I'm, I'm sorry, on the right, negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. And then 3 over negative 3 also gives you negative 1. So not too bad checking that one. There were no fractions involved. Let's have problem 3b and on your own problem. Looks a little bit different, but nothing crazy. I'll put the answer up in five seconds. I got 20 over 89. 
And if this were a test, I would plug that back in. And here. And make sure that the left and right sides are the same, because that's definitely a strange fraction. Problem 1. n minus 2 over n minus n minus 3 over n minus 6 equals 1 over n. So now you have rational equations, and you're having to solve them, finding the least common denominator. So at the beginning, you know, you probably want to ask yourself, is there any way I can combine things or simplify this so I'm not looking at so much crazy stuff? But I have this fraction here with n in the denominator, fraction here with n minus 6 in the denominator, and then n over here. Now, if this was the only thing I was dealing with, it would be less challenging. Um, but I have this n minus 6. And the only way I can put these together is if I have the same denominator. Um, so, our approach is going to be to cancel out these denominators. So as I go in and I multiply, I'm going to say, well, I want to multiply by n because I know that will eventually cross out with this and that. But I'm also going to multiply by n minus 6 so that it can cross out this. And the whole idea is this will kill all the fractions I'm dealing with um, and it'll be a way more approachable problem. So I'm seeing this as distribution basically, like it's going to be multiplied by everything. And for this I will write an in-between step out. And I'll write this in red so that it stands out as something that you might not end up doing later on. So here's my n minus 2 in the numerator of the first fraction being multiplied by n, and then also being multiplied by n minus 6, because this whole value is distributing to that first numerator. But this entire fraction was originally over n. Now I'm subtracting n minus 3 because I've moved on to this second fraction and its numerator, which is also being multiplied by n and n minus 6, all over n minus 6. Now I'm running tight on space. I wish I would have planned ahead better. But this is going to be equal to 1 over n, because now I've moved away from here and here, and I'm ready to throw my equal sign in there and deal with 1 over n. And just like the other ones, this is going to be times n times n minus 6. I think that ended up being decently clear. Now, the whole thing I was mentioning about this being an optional step is you can probably get to these problems and see what cancels out, so you don't have to bother writing as many things out. So on the left side, I have n minus 2, and I have n minus 6. I'll subtract whatever I get on this middle fraction after the n minus 6 is canceled, so I'm going to write n times n minus 3, and that will be equal to only n minus 6, which might seem weird because it seems very simple, but keep in mind this is more complicated because you had two things here. Here I only have a value of 1. I'm going to move this up so that we can see my next steps. I'm going to distribute n squared minus 8n, because I got minus 2n and minus 6n, plus 12, minus n squared plus 3n equals n minus 6. The nice thing about this is that my n squared terms go away. So in this problem, I'm not dealing with a quadratic. And then I'm going to scan through the left side. I see 3n minus 8n will give me negative 5n. Scan through, and I see plus 12. And that's equal to n minus 6. I will, let's see, maybe add 5n to both sides, just so I have a positive in front of my variable, which means that 12 will be 6n minus 6. You know, if you wanted, you could take a 6 of everything right now, which means it's going to be 2 equals n 
minus 1, and then add 1 to both sides, and you'll have n is 3. Now here we're talking about like a two-step equation, so if you don't like what I did there, don't do it. Okay, so we got 3. Let's look at if that is working in our original equation. 3 minus 2 is 1 over 3, so this is a third. Um, 3 minus 3 is 0, so that goes away. And then there's my equal sign, and is that equal to 1 over 3? Totally. So that one, although it seemed like it was going to be crazy to check, ended up working out nicely. Let's see. How are we going to do on these problems? Yep, we should do another example. Problem 2. 2b minus 5 over b minus 2. Minus 2 is equal to 3 over b plus 2. Now I'm looking for the least common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this entire fraction by b plus 2 to get rid of this guy later and then b minus 2. And then like before, I'm seeing this distribute everywhere. So in this first fraction, I'm just going to start picturing what's going to happen as I move this over to the left. The b minus 2's will cancel out. What that means is I will be left with the denominator of 2b minus 5 times b plus 2. Now, we cut a corner there, but I also think that by cutting a corner, we're maybe decreasing the likelihood that we'll make mistakes. Um, from this, I am going to subtract 2. Now, for a moment, I'm just going to leave that there, and I'm going to write my equal sign. And the reason I'm doing that is because, you know, you get something so simple as this minus 2, then suddenly you forget that you were multiplying that. So that's a common error to make when doing these problems. So I'm going to make sure I point that out, and then I'm going to have to rewrite b plus 2 times b minus 2. And then I'm moving on to my equal sign, and I'm picturing these guys crossing out so that I only have 3 times b minus 2. And as I'm writing that, I'm also kind of checking the signs because these are so similar to each other. I'm making sure that I don't accidentally write b plus 2. Okay, now We'll distribute, we'll FOIL 2b squared. I'll show this in multiple steps. Minus 4b minus 5b minus 10. Minus 2b squared minus 4, because that's b plus 2 times b minus 2. And I didn't show this in the same step. I wanted to break that apart. Is equal to 3b minus 6, to decrease the chance that I'd make a mistake. Now we have... 2b squared minus 4, excuse me, minus 9b minus 10 minus 2b squared plus 8 equals 3b minus 6. I will simplify the left. The 2b squareds cancel out. And then I'm going to have negative 9b minus 2 equals 3b minus 6. Um, this time I'll subtract and not even worry about having a negative. So I'll have negative 12b minus 2 equals negative 6. Add 2 to both sides and I'll have negative 12b equals negative 4, which means that b will be 1 third. Um, unless I made a sign error or something, I'm pretty certain this is accurate. It'd be crazy challenging to uh, check this right now. So I'll let you do that on your own. And 3 will be a, totally an OYO problem. And if you want, you're strongly encouraged to use Wolfram Alpha to check these. But here's my hint. Try not to make this as difficult as you have to. Can c squared plus 2c be factored at the start? And if you factor it, will it match up with anything? So this will be the first of two videos for these notes. I don't think there will be three. And you are solving, and so the idea behind 11.9 is you're getting to apply a lot of what you've done in this chapter with rational equations and functions.